I'm Carl. I'm 77 years old. I've been a hoarder all my life. This house looks like a recycling place, but it's my place and my style of living. You see a lot of collection. And the collection is historical, preservation, and recycling. And sometimes you have to mix it together because you don't have the means to separate it real well, but if you throw it away, you never go back and get it. I love this place because my mom, my dad, and my brother raised me here, and it's a historical place. It was the first house to be built on the block, and my family worked two jobs to pay for this place, and that's why I want to keep it. I'm Michelle, and I'm Carl's neighbor. I have known Carl for probably seven going into eight years now. I would say Carl's a hoarder. It's not just because of the accumulation of things. It's his inability to part with the things. I, I'm just having a hard time understanding how he sees value in certain things that he has. I just got to collect things because it's like a hobby. But to me, is it's not a game. It is a, like a job. It may not have no value to other people, but it's value to my heart because my family did it. My brother and my family were so much historians, they would save a piece of paper out of a garbage can if it mentions nothing about history. And that's why I keep all that stuff. I still have the original books my dad read. He always said, keep this, keep that. And that was my mom, too, and my brother. It's hard for me to live without my mother, my brother, and my dad. You hear him talk about his family, and you can hear the sense that he misses them. My dad's picture's in the other room and everything. I feel that the accumulation and the addition of the fence in the front, that, to me, felt symbolic for the emotional wall he built up after that. He was very hurt from that. I have the privacy fence for protection and privacy. And I think everyone should have a choice of how they want to live. I'm not hurting anyone. I'm Sean, and I'm an old friend and attorney of Carl. Carl's hoarding it has been going on for almost 30 years or so. As long as I've known Carl and from anything I've heard from before, it's been quite a problem because ordinance violations, different things like that have occurred due to the accumulation and amassment of just massive amounts of items. If Carl doesn't successfully clean up his yard, it's going to be bad. Unfortunately, you know, and, I, and I, I don't like to sugarcoat anything, so, you know, I'll just be completely honest, he's going to go to jail probably. He is essentially in direct violation of contempt orders. He's in contempt of court for failing to clean up his property. This is his last shot at really being able to help himself. I mean, Carl always tells me he just wants to put this to rest. He wants this issue to go away so he can move on. Well, this is that opportunity. So I hope he takes it.
Good morning, everybody. Thank morning. you, Dr. I'm Dr. David Tolan. I'm a clinical psychologist, and I specialize in the study and treatment of hoarding disorder. Carl, are you appreciative of the fact that if you don't clean it up, you are potentially facing jail time? Yes, I know that. You know that, OK. Yes. All right. Yes. So we want to keep you out of jail. Yes. And the way that we're going to do that is by, by cleaning this stuff out. And you've got to be the one to do it. Yes. OK. Yeah. OK, are you guys ready to get started? Yes, we are. All right, let's do it. All right. All right, Carl, we're going to get started on your yard. Like we said, we're going to clean out this space right here so that we can set up a sorting area. Does yeah. that sound good? Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. And would you be willing to take off your hat so that it doesn't get damaged and we can do work with you? Yes. All right, sounds good. Perfect. Let's I'll get someone to Perfect. run that over to a Thank safe spot you. if they would. Okay. Michelle, you want to grab it? All right, so let's just start through this pile, OK? okay. These sticks, for example. Yes, sir. What are they for? I've been saving them for the neighbors when they want to use plywood and everything during the year. Okay, so but is I that like something... helping people, you know? But, it, but it's not helping you, so is this something we could let go? Yes. Perfect. Yeah, I think we throw that away. Okay. All right. Good. See, Shut you're making up. good decisions you go. already. All this stuff? Yes, yeah, so that's it. That's All right. right. I don't okay. know what that is anymore. Well, that, that's okay. been outside. It definitely doesn't work. <laughs> okay, it's probably throw it away. Out. Okay, there you go. Go that way. You're doing great, Carl. You are doing great. The first few things Carl's touching, he's making really good decisions on. But as we get a little further into the process, he's starting to get stuck on some obvious trash. This concerns me a lot. Well, these are instructions I have to keep, but I had lost these a while back. Instructions for what? For what? What is it for? Tell me if you still have that. There's actually two. Well, I just keep it. It's just, now I got one. I'll keep one, throw that one. No, okay. that's, not, that's not what we wanted to do. I well, want you to I look do... at it and tell me what it is. Why would you need it if what it's been it buried for? in your front yard? Mm -hmm. Is this something that you still own and need instructions for? Well, no, but it's history instruction. Now, Here remember, we go. there's the history. So remember, I'm going to push you on history. Carl, this is not history, this is an old set of instructions. What do you think about the stuff in there so far? Did we make good decisions, bad decisions? Well, the top goes on the buckets that I told you. Some of the buckets I'm going to keep, and I'll need some of the tops, but I may not need all the tops. OK. So. Well, that kind of is where I was going with stuff. We're not, we're not letting go of quite enough stuff, and now you're already taking stuff off the well, truck. So Michelle, Michelle, come on in hey. here. Help us out, Michelle. Carl, you know I'm your friend, right? Right? You well. trust me? You put it in there for a reason. I always say trust your gut. Your gut said to throw this out. Wow. I would like you to trust your I gut. Not, I just thought about it. OK, go ahead. Finish what you want. No, no, not what I want, what you want. And yes. your gut said to throw this out initially. What's going to cause you a lot of trouble is you're going to overthink every decision you make. And every time you take a step in there, you're going to look at every little piece. No, that's just one piece out of everything. I know, but this is going to keep happening, Carl. And what happens if this happens for four days? I don't know how it's going with Carl. I was pretty optimistic this morning, but pretty frustrated right now. He's really annoying me. I know if I was about to lose everything, I'd do whatever I could right. we to all fix would. it. And I, I get the mental health aspect, but he has a whole team of people here to help him hold his hand through it and Still. This is a funnel I have to keep. It's a tool. I don't know what it was, why I tried to help him so much, but because I couldn't not do it. He's lucky to have a friend like mm -hmm. you. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, it's, it's really sad when somebody you care about is not just suffering, but suffering in a way that you can see the solution and they won't do it. That's really hard. I think he gets it, though. Like, there's a part of me, like, I think he understands it. I think he's just bullheaded. I think it's important that Carl see how Michelle is reacting and that he hear how this is affecting her. Hey, Carl, why don't you come in here and join us? Michelle's feeling some things. I don't know if you understand what can happen here, and I'm not trying to bully you. I'm not. From the minute I had any sort of 
lengthy conversation with you, I knew what mattered to you. And it was your family and this property. And the thought of you losing it is, it, uh, it makes me feel terrible. And I don't know if you realize that. I don't know if you understand the reality of it. And I'm not trying to scare you and I'm not trying to be mean, but I feel worse about it than you do in some way. And it's weird, but I want to see you get this place in shape. I want to see the C word. I'm not going to use the word off your back. Mm. I'd love to see that for whatever time you have left on this property. I would love to see that. But it hurts me to know that I don't think you really want to see that. And I'm not sure. I just want to know because I want to know why I'm here. Just because I need to keep two or three things or something doesn't mean it's wrong. I can count more than three soaps over there. Well, yeah, what's wrong with keeping soaps? Show me the law. I can't keep how look, many soaps. No, no, about no, the law. look. That's fine. Look at these bins. That's fine. I'm not throwing that soap away. I'm keeping it. I want to see the law that says I can't buy soap Carl, and where how many is it I can't Carl, own. Carl, listen to me. We're at the end of the road. There's nowhere but else to go. But where is that a crime to keep that? Um, at this point, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't matter. I'm not going to throw that away. OK, well, then I know where I'm at, Carl. They're going to fine me for that. I'm not talking about They're fines. They're not going to do that. I'm not talking about fines. I'm talking about where you're going to end up, Carl. You mean they're going to tell me I'm a criminal for keeping that? You're a criminal for keeping that in your, in your yard? Hey, it's not the soap. It's how much you have, Carl. Carl, what you're doing is against the law. And you are in violation of the law. And you have been fined. And you are facing jail time. You understand that? The danger is that if we don't clean up, Carl is either going to go to jail, he's going to be homeless, or he's going to die in that yard surrounded by junk. So does that look okay for us to close this up and take it off? Where are you going? Carl, what are you looking for? There were some tools up there on that shelf. Well, I'm sure they kept any tools. We have a box of tools over here. Actually, two. All right, come here. Come here. There was a bunch of tools here. Okay, we have two bins full of tools set aside. What happened to the stuff that was on this shelf? We have bins set aside of things that we thought you'd want, and we set them aside for you to look at. All these batteries are recyclable. They told me to put my batteries in, uh, what do you call those milk carts? Mm -hmm. And I'm allowed to do that. That is recyclable batteries. OK, with can my that car go with batteries. the metal? Or does it have to go just with batteries? It has to go with batteries only. OK, and you're going to take those to a recycling center? Yes. When? When you all get done. All of this wood here like this, the boys in the blue shirts are in charge of it. OK. There's tools in here. We saved the tools. OK. And this is a historical sign. I'm not throwing this away. So when is the next time you're going to run an all-night laundry room? All-night laundry room is just a logo, OK? All right. I don't want it thrown away. Done. It won't get thrown away. What happened to all the clothes hangers that were here? We boxed them up and put it in for recycling. I said, leave those clothes hangers alone. I definitely said that 4,000 times. Carl, I'll get you some new ones. They were covered with mildew. They were, they were no longer healthy. I said, leave these alone. And I said that 4,000 times about this. Carl's freaking out about the hangers. You know, we're talking about a couple dollars worth of hangers. And in the big picture, I don't get it, but he is pissed. I have used natural resources to dry my clothes. The damn neighbors hang their clothes out here with their natural, stupid clothes hangers and everything on there. Carl, what's got you so upset? 
is just that I had mentioned something 4,000 times. Do not throw this away. This is why we have to throw this stuff away. But when I say don't throw it away, don't throw it away. This is what all those hangers had. All those hangers that were hanging on that tree did not have any clothes on it. No, I know they were empty, but they were covered with mold and mildew. You don't think you can wash them out with rainwater with all my jugs? Why are you getting so upset over some hangers? The, all the families from the cigar factories basically lived here. They had to make do with what they had to live with. We were the last family on this damn neighborhood to have a damn washing machine. When Carl gets agitated, he goes on these almost incoherent rants. We were the last ones to have a damn TV in this damn neighborhood. He starts screaming about his neighbors and about the government and about Fidel Castro. That's that stupid Fidel Castro embargo. This stupid country we got has done nothing about it to fix it to give more jobs in Florida. Carl, and the damn Carl, 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 yeah. Carl, come here, come here, man. What, what's going on with you right now? He's so wrapped up in other worries and other concerns that he can't keep his mind straight. You seem to be really revved up. Take a breath, take a breath. At this point, I really think that I have to call Elder Protective Services. This is not to punish Carl. It's not that he's in trouble. I'm frankly concerned about his ability to care for himself, and he needs somebody to help him. How's it going in here? It's going good. He is still keeping too much, for sure. Hmm. Um, I am trying to get him to get rid of eight for every 10 we look at. And he's at about five and five. OK, so, so. getting there. He's closer. There. He's better than yesterday. So what's the rule? What are we? What rule are we following? So with polos. He's willing to get rid of all polos except the ones that say HCC, right? Yeah, or special he's getting, logos and stuff. Yeah. And, good, and the good ones that I can still wear. And he's you know, getting rid of most or... coats mm -hmm. um, and sweatshirts that are in terrible <laughs> and shape. And some winter stuff. I gotta have some winter yeah, stuff. Yeah, no, you do. Like this gray T-shirt, great shape. We yes. should keep that. Yeah. Yep. These are no good, but they're good rags to use and clean your hands yeah, with. Yeah, but you don't have the ability to keep that right now. It's better to yeah, get rid of it. Yeah, I don't think you want to be keeping a lot of rags. No, Carl. you really no, don't. Yeah. This one? Yeah, I got to have Can that we... one. It's USA. But it's stained. One, once in a while, we got to have a bad one. You have a few bad ones already yeah. in there. Mm. Carl, I think this is. OK, OK, throw it away. Yeah, this throw is an away. example of hanging on to history that That's is fine. not really good That's for you. That's fine. OK, let's keep going, please. Okay. Let's keep going. OK. Carl's rate of discarding seems to be getting better. Yesterday, he was only discarding about 15% of the items that he and Carolina were working on. Today, he's up to 50%. So that's progress. Hey, Michelle. I just wanted to check in and see how you're doing. I, I got hit with a ton of just overwhelmed and to be honest like i get grossed out really easily mm -hmm. and it's it's kind of a miracle that i didn't get to that point there's a lot here that can one. gross a person out oh yeah like when liquids are dripping down your legs from buckets and you don't know what it is like yeah. i kind of maintained because i knew we had to get through it but like i'm getting to a point where it's a lot for me to handle, and I'm just kind of trying to take a few breaks and not have a complete meltdown. <laughs> OK. So just seeing the clutter is anxiety producing for mm -hmm. you. Plus, this is somebody you know, so you're actually seeing him live this way, too, which mm -hmm. I imagine that's got to be upsetting. It's a lot for me to process and handle. Yeah, it is. It's taking a level of strength that I don't think many people understand if they're not struggling with that type of anxiety. Michelle is feeling a little overwhelmed, and understandably so. She's not used to being involved in this level of clutter. So it's a bit uh, shocking to her, and, and sometimes she just needs to take a break and cool down. Well, let me say, Carl's lucky to have you as a neighbor and a friend. Thank he you. really is. Thank you. I'm glad that you're here. Hey, Carl. 
Exactly. What I want to do is make sure that you're safe and healthy and happy even after we leave. You know, the idea is to make sure that not only do we get a lot done here, but that you can keep the progress going. But I think you need more services than what we're able to provide just in these four days. Would you agree with that, that you need more services and support? Yes. Yeah. Now, the agency that's best equipped to do that is called Adult Protective Services. But I want to make sure that, that it's clear to you that these are the experts in support and advocacy, not people that are going to come and do something bad to you. Do you have questions about that, Carl? If I have any concerns, uh, who do I call and contact? I'm going to get you a number for Adult Protective Services, and I'm going to make the call to them. Ideally, I'd like you to help me with that call. Would you do it with me? Yes. So we can call together. Yes. And we can talk to them. I would like my attorney or someone can be around, maybe, or okay. listen well, at the telephone. Be fine. I'll be there. So let's just make the call and get the ball rolling. All right. Thank you very much, You're Michelle. Okay. I appreciate Thank your help. This is the Department of Children and Families, Florida Abuse Hotline. OK, very good. I appreciate it. Ultimately, the APS worker that I spoke with said they're going to be sending somebody out to look at the house and to talk to Carl. All right, you guys, we made it. Yeah. Carl, you did amazing. Thank you really you. did. Thank you for making it amazing. Yes. Well, we couldn't have done any of this without you letting go. We had some struggles, but you made it through, OK? How are you feeling right now at the end of all this? I feel better. There's a place that I, that I lost, and now you found it. It's like Columbus finding America. <laughs> Well, I'll accept that answer as something really positive, <laughs> in a Carl kind of way. <laughs> I just want to address the crisis real quick. OK, the outside is not going to pass city code still. They're going to be very pleased, I will say that. When they come back, they're going to see a huge difference. If we have to send a report to Luke saying, you know, we got rid of 10 dumpsters, which we did, that's impressive to them. They'll just want to keep seeing that progress. Yes. OK, it can't just stop here. Yes. But we do have access now to get your water fixed. Yes. We have access to the meter and to the lines, so yes. they can come and do that now. That makes this house a little more livable for you. Yes, sir. OK, you have a lot of boxes, yes. as you can see, that you're going to have to go through. Yes. But all your important papers, your books, your clothing, everything you wanted saved is here. Yes. OK. Michelle, how are you feeling after all this? You kind of had the roller coaster ride. Yeah, I did. <laughs> um, I'm proud of you, Carl. Oh, it's okay. I know I was a little harder on you than I normally am, but I'm glad you got rid of so much stuff. You made some good moves. And what I'd like is to see you keep it up, see if you can do some of this on your own. I do feel happy for Carl, but I also know he's got a long road ahead of him. I don't know where he's going to end up still. If he can find a little bit of peace and happiness, even for a short period of time, great. I'm proud of Carl. Yeah, I'm, I need a break from him, but I'm, I'm proud of him. Thank you for allowing us to come in here and help you. You did a great job. You're welcome, and thank you for making me trust you. Well, you gave us that trust. Each day, it got better and better. You know, we pushed in the beginning, and we know it was hard for you. But with each day, you let go a little bit more. The bedroom is something that we were able to tackle, a place for you to rest and lay your head. Thank you. You want to check it out? Yes, ma'am. All right. What is this? <laughs> <laughs> My god. <laughs> Jump on it. <laughs> Oh, man, that's the greatest thing I've had in over 35 years here. It feels like I'm in the Hoarders Hyatt Eiffel Tower. My mom's cedar chest. Yes, sirree. Great. Everything. Wow. I can see a room. Wow. That's the comfort of the <laughs> world I now. Of this. I know. This Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Will you send that to me, Yes. Please? I feel like I'm living in a real world now. I was at war with myself. I was at war with society. Everything was negative. And now I feel like there's a positive freedom here at this property that I can come to. 
my new home. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Hi, thanks for being a fan of Hoarders. And subscribe to A&E for more videos and click the links around me to watch more.